<laughs> Hi, it's Dr. Sharon. Uh, hopefully you all saw that I was doing a quick Facebook Live. Let me make sure that it is quick and check my clock. It is 3.50. Sometimes these go a little bit long, but I need to get uh, to the gym. It seems like I'm always doing Facebook Live right before I do something else, and that's really trying to maximize. But I do hear you, and my last live got like over 2,000 views and a lot of questions and all of that, and that's, that's sort of what I do and want to bring information to you that I think is important. And while it's not somebody going to the prom in a coffin or the latest joke, uh, we hope that you share the information. It seems like things that get shared have to be nasty, mean, or something comical. But what about our health? What about our wellness? And hopefully, I'm trying to rig up this so you can see it. Uh, hi to everyone joining. But hopefully, we can share information in a positive way that will make an impact. And I do believe that Facebook uh, and other social media are great opportunities um, to share information. So that's why I do it. I really am going to be quick tonight. Um, and my topic tonight is going to be around cancer. I do want to give a shout out. We're doing an event in uh, Fort Washington, Maryland, May 5th on Saturday. It's the 20th year that we have done um, the Ebenezer AME um, Church's annual Women's Health Awareness Day and Sporting Day. There's going to be Zumba. There's going to be hip hop. There's going to be yoga. There's going to be Zumba gold for our seniors. But more importantly, there are going to be workshops after workshops after workshops on health, wellness. We have probably over 60 uh, health professionals that will be there doing workshops, ask a doc. Literally, you can sit down and talk one-on-one -on -one with the physician. Um, hi, Larissa. Hi, everybody that's on. Um, you can talk with the physician, a pharmacist, personal trainers that can talk about what you need to do in a very intimate, we'll have well over a thousand uh, persons there, but a very intimate setting. Um, you can get blood pressure, cholesterol, feet screening, uh, podiatrists will be there, dentists will be there to do all health screenings. Um, I can go on and on. We will have cooking demonstrations all day. For the first time ever, we're going to have four cooking demonstrations and tastings, but you need to get there early. My friend, the great Dr. Ian Smith, you've seen him all over. I think last week he was on The View. He's been on ABC, CBS, whatever. He has a great new book out called The Clean 20. But more importantly than doing a book signing and meeting people, Dr. Ian has agreed to do a workshop where he's going to talk about health and wellness. A nationally renowned um, physician and, and great guy um, that I care a lot about. Hi, Ian. Uh, and I'm so grateful that he is coming to the DMV and going to do a workshop. He will be with us for most of the day, but get there early. He will have limited books. He will do an appearance. He will take pictures with you, talk with you one-on-one, -on -one, all of that. But it is May 5th. Uh, you can go to godisawonder.com and register for health awareness. Men are invited, men, women, and then particularly teens and adolescents. We have a family counselor that specializes in teens and adolescents. She talks about grief, the grief of divorce, the issues with transitions for teen, the, the pressure academically, uh, grief of the death of a grandparent, but also she's gonna talk about the school shootings, post-traumatic stress disorder that many teens and adolescents are facing in, in 2018. How do you get through the news as a teen? So please join us next Saturday. There are people coming from Maryland, D.C., Virginia. We have even had people coming from Philly from Delaware, all over. It's absolutely free. We're giving away literally tens of thousands of dollars worth of free gifts. Our team has been great. There'll be refreshments, food trucks there, not food trucks, farmer's market there. 
um, and lots and lots of vendors and other things. Um, there are probably one or two spots available for vendors now, but it is a day for you, nine to four. You know what? We go to a game. We go to all these different things, but you can go to a place to talk one-on-one -on -one with a physician, one-on-one -on -one with a pharmacist, get all of your health screenings done. Um, literally, we're testing for cholesterol, diabetes, blood pressure, HIV, all of that in a safe environment. I will be there all day. And uh, it's just the, the panelists. You're going on trips this summer. We have a travel medicine doc coming. You want to know how to maximize your insurance, how to navigate the hospital, how to take care of your elderly parents. We have a physician. The GPS doctor is coming. And so we want you to come. Please help share, spread the word. So now let's get to the topic. It is the annual health and wellness and sporting day. It's going to be fun. Be ready to move. The hip hop will be there. I'm going to be doing some hip hop. Um, but be ready to move and have a great day. Um, next Saturday, May 5th, 9 to 4, Dr. Ann Smith is one of our very special guests. We have a ton of special guests, but his workshop is the first workshop in the morning. So we will open up. If you don't get there by 9, you will miss um, his workshop. And we have limited number of books that will be available for sale. And he is autographing books. If you have his other books, he's a New York Times bestseller. Bring them. If you have my books, bring them. I'll sign them. We have other doctors that will be there. So please, please, please share this on your page and all of that. But today we're talking about cancer quickly. I said I was going to be a quick Facebook live. Uh, sometimes my stuff goes long, but y'all ask questions and I'm so glad. In the last month alone, I've received well over 150 questions either on my social media pages like Facebook, Twitter, but also on my website. And it really is important for me to hear from you what you want to know about. Uh, last time I did Facebook Live, I think we talked about vitamins. That's gotten over 2,100, 2,200 views. And so I love that. It needs to be 20,000. Not because it's me, but because we need the information. This is important. I, I am a national spokesperson, one of the national spokespersons for the American Cancer Society and sit on their board for African American health. I am fortunate and blessed. I don't know why they even got me, uh, but I'm fortunate and blessed to speak all over the country and train people that are both in health and not in health about cancer and how um, to educate populations, educate your churches, your schools, your family about health. And I do so because y'all know I'm crazy. And I just like to keep it real. Hi, Ludlo. Uh, I saw Derek Ward. Uh, a bunch of people. I'm not doing call outs. I saw some sorrows, Donna, uh, because I'm trying to get through this. But thank you for joining. Uh, please invite your friends. But I'm very fortunate to speak for the American Cancer Society. I rarely ever do a talk that I don't hit on cancer. And it's important for us to be real and to be practical. And so my role with ACS is to often to educate, to empower, but also to bring my own unique spin on how do you engage? And you know what? Cancer is a scary word. Let's not play. Every time I go get a mammogram, every time, in the back of my mind, I'm saying, I wonder if they're going to find something. Okay. Um, but you know what? You can live with cancer. I spent a lot of time talking to persons who are living with cancer saying, hey, let's beat it. Let's go. Let's move on. Um, and, and then how do you engage? How do you be support? How are you supportive? So I'm going to do a quick Facebook live, I promise you. So let's hit it now. These are the top cancers and the recommendations for you with the own, my own little Dr. Sharon spin. As always, you can go to drsharononline.com. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that, and, and message me. I still answer all my questions. But if you wanted 140 with this last month with the cancer stuff, I hope you watch because I haven't gotten through all those answers yet. So I'm looking at my notes because I want to make sure um, that I hit everything. And this is from one of my recent talks. Again, a great place to go for general information on cancer is the American Cancer Society. It is something that we should support and we should do. And again, I'm on their national board, uh, their national advisory board, work a lot um, with persons, all cancers, all populations, but am specifically tasked with being one of the national spokespersons and trainers 
for persons in African American health. So, number one, let's talk about breast cancer really quick. You got them? Do you have breast? Yeah, men and women do have chest and breast. Some men have bigger breasts than others. Some women have bigger breasts than others. And actually, it doesn't matter the size. It is important for me to start off by saying that men get breast cancer. The fine and still, he probably 110 years old, fine shaft had breast cancer and has been very, very, uh, Richard Roundtree has been very open about his struggle with breast cancer. So men, if you feel something in your uh, pectoralis major breast, you know that little fatty tissue, okay? If you feel something, then you need to talk to your physician. If you have a family history of women in your family having breast cancer, you really may or may not be at higher risk. We really don't know, but just think about it. But immediately, if you feel something, then you need to make sure that you get it checked out. Don't just think breast cancer is for women. Who should get screened? This is important. And I'm gonna tell you like I tell my nieces, I would tell my friends, after 40, every woman should be screened. I know this is a bit controversial. Several years ago, they increased the at No, this is Dr. Sharon. This is what most healthcare professionals are saying. After 40, certainly 40 to 44, you should start mammograms and um, screenings, um, um, as well as you should be doing your self-breast exams. The event on May 5th, we actually have someone that is going to demonstrate how to do a self-breast exam, do bra thinnings and a bunch of other stuff, and a special workshop on breast health. Let's not talk about breast cancer. Let's talk about breast health. So you should be able to feel your breast to know what's abnormal and know what's not normal. As I say often in talks, many breast cancers are found by your sexual partners. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not a breast exam. That's for Plato. But there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but you should be able to feel your breasts and to examine your breasts once a month. Get a mammogram starting at 40. And then um, certainly from 45 to 54, every, everybody say every, in your house say every, every single year. Without fail, get a mammogram. My mother and I had an interesting conversation yesterday. And this was on colon cancer and a colonoscopy and her age. My mother is very proud to be 77. She corrected me yesterday when I said she was 76. Um, very proud that she is actually going to be 77 in August. And she said, well, they told me I didn't need a colonoscopy anymore. And I don't know about mammograms, but my mother drives. She's very active or whatever. You need to have the conversation. If they find something, what am I going to do? As I told my mom, in 10 years, if you're still the same way, we're still going to be doing mammograms, colonoscopies, other screenings, because we would do something about it. And so that's a sidebar. So screening should continue as long as you're in good health and you're expected to live five to 10 years or more. If you are, have an elderly parent in a nursing home that's not um, communicative at the end of dementia, there's no need to put them through cancer screening because they are transitioning out. That's just a sidebar. So breast health mammograms after 40, certainly between 45 and 54, should you get the CT of the breast, should you get the ultrasound, should you get all that, your baseline is a mammogram. That's the base because more of them have been done. Unless your doctor has said, I want you to start here, but you should have baseline mammogram if you have cancer in your family, breast cancer in your family, you need to get a mammogram earlier. This is so important, particularly in African-American women who get breast cancer at an earlier age and it's more aggressive. Unfortunately, if you are diagnosed with breast cancer, say in your early or late 20s, early 30s, that has cancer is proving that it's more aggressive in you. And we need to make sure that you get screened and that you follow up after you have been treated um, with breast cancer. You need to make sure you're getting all your cancer screenings and you need to celebrate every single year moving forward. Uh, and again, cancer is the big scary word. Don't have fear, take care of it. The advances are there and you can live a full healthy life with any of the cancers that I'm talking about. Next, I want to talk about lung cancer, which we don't talk about a lot. Basically, 
you might need to get screened for lung cancer as an individual screening if you are 55 to 74 is the general recommendation, even if you're in good health. Um, and most importantly, if you have smoked in your lifetime, you need to be screened and you need to make sure that you don't hide this fact from your doctor. Even in your teens, in your 20s, if you smoked and now you're 60, you need to say, I do have a history of smoking. If you have at least a 30 pack year smoking history and are still smoking and quit within the last 15 years, um, then that means that you definitely need to get screened. Um, and that goes how many days and now when they talk about, cause it gets all scary. I gotta even read this. When they talk about pack years, this means a pack year is a number of cigarettes packs that you smoke each day multiplied by the number of years that you smoke. So if you smoke a pack of cigarettes a day for 30 years, you have a 30 pack year history. Okay. Now, it is important that you think about this. Now, we know we're talking about marijuana, people smoking weed, whatever you do, that ain't the topic here. But you probably need to make sure you tell your doctor because we don't necessarily know the link. We will probably in about 10 years after now legalization, the link between even marijuana smoking. I know I'm getting some questions about this. Uh, and uh, tobacco smoking, but you do need to talk to your physician. There is no judgment. Honey, I know physicians, nurses, everybody and their mama, uh, and uh, they smoke weed, do whatever, whatever. Ain't nobody judging you. Just go in, be honest. If you can't be honest with your physician about what you do, then why are you even going to the doctor? So it's not a judgment zone. It is get it done, all right? So 55 to 74, if you've had a smoking history or been even exposed to secondhand smoke, at least just talk to your doctor about lung cancer screening, which the first baseline will be an x-ray. I need to just say that. Prostate cancer. Of course, women, you cannot get prostate cancer. You could be surprised how many people have asked me, women, about prostate cancer. I thought they were talking about their man. No, they were talking about themselves. You don't have a prostate, honey. You, If you don't have a penis, you don't have a prostate. Okay? Seriously, people have asked me. Oh, God bless. Okay. Uh, if you are not born biologically a man, you don't have a prostate, so you don't have to worry about prostate cancer. So, at age 50, you should begin the discussion about prostate cancer. This has been controversial. Do you get the PSA? Do you not? Do you get the digital rectal exam? That's the big medical school word for finger up your butt to feel the prostate. I'm Dr. Sharon, let's keep it real. If a woman, and I say this all over the country, if a woman can have your 10 pound big head baby uh, in 15 hours of labor, you can get an index finger in your booty for five seconds to see if your prostate's enlarged. Men need to stop being wimps, just get it done. It's not in the homophobia, they know it. Just get your prostate checked, okay? Um, now, if you are African American and have a father or brother that had prostate cancer before the age of 65, start screening at 45, okay? Uh, your doctor and you should talk about whether you get the PSA blood test. I feel like I'm yelling. The PSA blood test and the rectal exam and how often you should get it. That's it. I have four brothers. You all know that if you follow me at all. What do I tell all my brothers? When you hit 45, get it checked. Now, we know that the longer men live, the longer they're, the more they're at risk for prostate cancer. If you get up to 80, 85, that part, 70, 75, if it's not aggressive, often you don't do anything because it is a slow growing, typically slow growing cancer. But this is a discussion um, with your healthcare provider. So next, cervical cancer. You know what I said about the prostate? That if you don't have a penis, you don't have you you can't get prostate cancer. Now, if you don't have a vagina and you don't have a uterus and a cervix, so a uterus is where the baby lives when you're pregnant. The bottom part, uh, which looks like an upside down balloon, that is a cervix. That is cervical cancer. If you've had a hysterectomy, and many women don't know this, I do talks all over the country all the time. And I said, they said I had a partial hysterectomy. And I said, well, what did they leave? 
Did they take the cervix? Well, I don't know. Well, okay. First of all, get your medical records. Um, second of all, if even you've had um, your uterus removed and very few women still have a cervix after a uterus being removed, then you do need to get a cervical exam. But a cervical exam means you get in stirrups, the doctor goes in and looks at the vagina, goes in, swipes some um, cells off, and that's the cervical screening, cancer screening. Typically, we recommend that you start at 21. However, be real. If, hi, Jen Foster, tell Chris Foster I said, hey, um, um, if, let's be real, if your daughter is 16, 15, whatever, I say this to my nieces, everybody, if you grown, doing what grown folk do, then you need to get grown folk tests. So we typically say at 21 start cervical cancer screening. But if you have a teen that is sexually active, talk to their pediatrician, talk to their OBGYN about screening tests for cervical cancer, okay? Um, we do know, this is a sidebar, and usually when I say this in talks, people start counting. We do know that if you've had more than five, I think it's five sexual partners in your life, you have slightly increased risk for cervical cancer. Usually when I do this, people are like, one, two, let me count, let me count. Okay, no judgment here. Seriously, just get checked uh, for cervical cancer, and that is, again, uh, 21 years old, and then you would get uh, under 21. Typically, we say you should not be tested unless you have high risk. Certainly, if you have the human papillomavirus, you need to be tested. Um, 21 to 29, you should have a pap test every three years. Many say more than that, and you should be tested for the HPV uh, test, um, H human papillomavirus testing, and then 30 to 65, you should have a pap test. Um, I still, I say every three to five years, I think the standard recommendations, um, are every three years and then over 65, um, then you can decrease your cervical cancer screening if you still have your cervix. But again, you, even if you've had a total hysterectomy, the vagina is still the vagina. Somebody needs to look at it at your physical exam because it's more than just cancer screening. And if you had a, um, cervical cancer, you need to be checked for, you know, vaginal scrapings for vaginal cancer, okay? And I do believe that every woman, and I do mean every woman, every teen needs to be vaccinated against the human papilloma virus. Um, and all of the moral issues, way back when this came out, I wrote articles and did a whole tour on HPV. It is not anything except for a vaccine. There's no moral judgment. Men and women, boys and girls, do need to be vaccinated, okay? Next is uterine cancer. Quickly, at the time of menopause, all women should have a discussion with their doctor about uterine cancer. We really don't have a great test for uterine cancer or guidelines for uterine cancer. For cervical cancer, that's a swab. Uterine cancer, you need to really talk to your doctor if you are post-menopause, you've been through menopause, all of a sudden you start having a period or start seeing blood, you need to make sure you immediately go see your physician. Uh, and then usually that's a, a biopsy, ultrasound, those things. Colon cancer, colorectal cancer. We're going to group it all together. Colon, colorectal cancer. Um, one of my friends is having a colonoscopy tomorrow. I know he's going to be hungry and pooping a lot, getting ready for the prep. You know who you are. Uh, uh, but you, again, prevention, early detection is key. One of the best tests that we can ever do for colon for screening is colorectal cancer screening because the colonoscopy is where there's a light at the end of a tube. You get a little twilight anesthesia. You get a little twilight. You get a little high. And they go in and they look at the colon. Uh, I prefer the colonoscopy to the flexible sigmoidoscopy. As I say in talks all over, if you're going to go in there, go in there one time, right? So if I, you got to drink all the stuff, clean out the colon, not eat for 24 hours, whatever, go in all the way, look at the entire colon versus just the, the lower colon. Um, if you do that, 
you need to start that at 50 unless you have a history of colorectal cancer in your family, then you need to have screening earlier. And many of us say starting at 40. Um, the other issue is if you have other issues and conditions, talk to your doctor. Uh, for instance, if you have irritable bowel syndrome, you need a colonoscopy, right? It's not just for colon cancer. But at 50, both men and women, I do this and I usually give away gifts. If you come next week to May 5th, I'll do this. And that is who gets colon cancer more, men or women? Most people say men because you're thinking prostate cancer, colon cancer. No, it's actually equal, men and women. It's the third leading uh, cancer in men and women. So colonoscopy every 10 years. If you are doing a flexible sigmoidoscopy, which is you're only looking at part of the colon, that would be every five years. There is also the virtual colonoscopy, which I get asked about a lot every five years, uh, and then what's called the double contrast barium enema, the BE, that's where you drink a bunch of stuff and you go get an x-ray for all practical purposes, that's every five years. The gold standard is a full colonoscopy, and if it's fine, it's every 10 years. If it's not fine, you go back in, and then what I like about the colonoscopy, if they see a little polyp, they clip it then. If they see something else, they clip it then. If you do some of the other tests, you're going to have to go. If you get a flex sick bonoscopy, you're going to have to go back in, drink all the stuff again, do the prep again, and go to colonoscopy. Why not just get it done? So um, the other thing that you do besides the colonoscopy, um, that is the yearly fecal immunochemical test. Let me break. I just said that so y'all know I did go to med school. So... The fecal immunochemical test, I, I say that word about twice a year. Most of y'all know it has some stool cards that your doctor give you that you never send back. That's what we talk about. Um, uh, and then the, um, well, that's the fit. That's not the stool card. Uh, that's a test that, that's done. Um, uh, and then the fecal occult blood test is the stool card that you get sent home. That's the biggest waste of money in medicine because most of you get it. Talk about myself. My doctor gave it to me. I just said, don't even get that to me. You know I ain't doing that. I'm just be honest. I should. But I'm like, okay, just go on. Let's hook it up, right? Uh, but you should every year. I'm just saying, I'm going to do it this year just because I'm talking junk. I promise you, I am going to do the fecal cold blood test. I'm going to send my stool cards back. My primary care physician often looks at my Facebook post and then talks junk to me. I am going to do it. So you do it, okay? So now... If those are positive, you then have to go get a colonoscopy, but you're supposed to do those every year. So the stool cards every year and then colonoscopy every 10 years. Okay, those are the big boys. Those are the big boy cancers. There are other cancers that you don't necessarily screen for except for skin cancer. I left that off. Skin cancer, you need to look at your skin. Right? If you see a mole or you see a new mark that is irregular, so usually it's nice and round, now it looks like an asteroid or something like that, do go get checked out. I say this all over the country. You need to be butt naked in a doctor's office a couple times a year. That whole modesty thing, don't get butt naked. Put on the little blue thing to tear with your little stuff out. But you. <laughs> Who hates those gowns? Can you get the right size? But um, because they need to look at your skin, seriously. Uh, um, so they need to look at your skin. Um, and you need to have a full exam. Uh, the only time women go to the doctor is not to go get a pap smear. You are more than your vagina and your breast. We have entire bodies. Men, you are more than your penis uh, and your prostate. We need to have full body exams. And so while we need to have our GYNs uh, take care of that stuff, or even family practice, internal medicine that does pap smear, that's wonderful. You need to get eye exam, all of those things. But you need to be butt naked in the doctor's office at least once a year and say, look, doc, look at my skin. Look at this, look at this spot right here. Is this really a mole or is this skin cancer? And African Americans, Asians, brown, yellow, orange people. Well, we ain't really got but one orange person. Shout out to the produce. 
who was putting himself at risk for breast for uh, skin cancer with all that tanning. But that's an aside. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna keep it apolitical. But uh, <laughs> um, and, and on a serious note, if you do tanning beds and suntan and all that, and I've talked so much about uh, SPF and and sunscreen the last two facebook lives y'all just go look in the video archives but make sure uh, that you know everyone is at risk for skin cancer and what you also should know is that if african americans or people of color get skin cancer often we get skin cancer that is more deadly so now finally when we talk about cancer number one I, again, I am so honored to talk about cancer in a way I hope that people appreciate. I know it's scary. I had a breast cancer scare several years ago where I went in, my mammogram was abnormal, and I was supposed to be on a plane the next day. Where I was like, no, let me talk to the radiologist right now. Fortunately, I'm quote-unquote Dr. Sharon, so we went back and looked at it. I was like, what the, what's that look like, huh? It's been a long time since med school. I immediately got an ultrasound, immediately got a biopsy. Everything was fine. That's great. Um, but you jump on it. Don't now go wait 10 months and forget you're supposed to have the follow-up. If you're supposed to follow up, follow up. Because where we are now with cancer, most cancers, is if you find out early, there are so many treatment options. You can live and live well and live normal lives with cancer, through cancer, um, through the whole process. And that's for many, many of them. And so it's also important to talk about how do you take control of your health and reduce your risk Overall, a low-fat diet, I talk about this, have to do a whole nutrition and cancer. A low-fat diet reduces your risk of all cancers, most cancers, certainly colorectal cancer and breast cancer. Those two we definitely know. Stay away from every form of tobacco. I'm a North Carolina girl that went to med school at East Carolina University in tobacco field. I saw the absolute worst um, lung cancers, tongue cancers, throat cancers known to man. Uh, even during medical school, and people still protested us talking about not not smoking. There is nothing good that comes from a cigarette. Plus, I don't know how you rich people afford it, because I looked up a pack of cigarettes, $7, $9, and many of you smoke 10 pack, 5 packs a day. That's crazy. All right. Um, get to and stay at a healthy weight. Keep moving regular physical activity. We know that there is a correlation between exercise, which I'm getting ready to go do, and lowering your cancer risk. Eat healthy with plenty of fruits and vegetables. That's so important when we talk about colorectal cancer. It is five fresh fruits and vegetable servings every single day. That is important. And then limit how much alcohol you drink if you drink at all. That is important. Protect your skin with sunscreen. And if you're going to the um, beach, wear the wide brim hats and all of that. The two, you get two things out of this. Two, put on sunscreen, and I'm going to just speak to the vanity part. Put on sunscreen because if you don't, you get wrinkled more. So that's the vanity. But then has a doctor telling you that, that helps me tell you to decrease your risk of uh, cancer, of uh, skin cancer. Know your family history, know yourself, and know your own risk factors. Have a wonderful conversation, and I say wonderful, because when you're talking about your health and early detection, it should be wonderful. This is your body. That's it, it's your body. Good, bad, and ugly. The lumps, the bumps, all that, they're your body. You take control of your health. Yes, I hope you have a wonderful doctor. Yes, I hope you have a wonderful nurse practitioner, nurse, aide, whoever. I hope that you have a great health care team. But ultimately, they go home to their family. And if something happens to you, it is you and your family that have to fight it out. Many of us pay tremendous amounts for health care Tremendous amounts for uh, health insurance or our employer does it or whatever. Uh, but then you don't use it. Man, I'm talking to you. So it's not just if you have to go to the emergency room. Get your physical exams. Please, please, please. And get cancer screening. And when you go in, just say, say these three things. Which, you know, I always talk about, they're called Ask Me Three. You should never go to the doctor's office, to the dentist, to the podiatrist, to whomever. 
and never ever come out not knowing this. Number one, Doc, what's my main problem? Doc, what we gonna do about it? What should I do about it? And number three, why is it important? What's my main problem? What are we gonna do about it? Why is it important in any variation of that? What's my main problem? Why is it important? What should we do about it? And then take that information and move forward. If you have a question for your doctor that is not answered, get a second opinion. It's your life. We spend more time making sure we get oil changes, that we wash our car, that we wax our car versus taking care of our body. That's it for me preaching. I said I was going to try to do a, a small Facebook, uh, short Facebook live. We talked about in this segment um, being healthy. We talked about breast cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, cervical cancer, uterine cancer, colorectal cancer, and what the screening recommendations are. Again, shout out to American Cancer Society. If you're looking for someone to donate to, I know what they do in the community. Uh, I, fortunately, I work with them and speak for them and am on their advisory board. They really, really, really are a legit organiza organization. Please go to their website because all of the cancers, all of the recommendations and resources are there. Finally, there is no state in America, no state, in America that a woman without health insurance cannot get breast cancer screening absolutely free and cervical cancer screening absolutely free. So go on the American Cancer Society site, Susan Coleman's site, email me, my staff will send the information. There are resources for you. Uh, I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. I'm getting ready to go to the gym. I always like sharing with Facebook Live. I hope it's helped somebody. Please do me a favor. Share this on your page and let me know how we're doing. I'm really trying to shorten them up a little bit, but this is vital information. If we can send out all these silly things, which I love, all of these political things that I, you know, are great, um, you know, because I'll get political. Why can't we send out information on our health? You literally sharing the information uh, and encouraging a man to go get a prostate exam, you actually may help save his life, right? And I'm silly. I try to keep it real and keep it simple because that's what works. I got a question right now about small intestine cancer. You, again, will, when you do the colonoscopy, you're going to look at both the large and the small intestine. It is important that you look that you get the colonoscopy, um, and then cancer of the cancers to have. Certainly, colorectal cancer is a good one to have if you if there's such a thing as a good one because we know that you can take out that part of the intestine that you can remove it if you catch it early and the survival rates are there. But it is important for all of cancer. Early detection and prevention are key. You all have a wonderful Sunday. Uh, again, prevention is key, and that also means exercise. That also means eating fruits and vegetables and getting your tests done. Okay? You all have a great day. I hope it helps somebody. Did I do all right? Y'all like that? Y'all understand what I'm talking about? Y'all got to ask me three, Doc, what's my main problem? Why is it important? What do I need to do? Do contact me, Dr. Sharon online, May 5th, next week. Hi, Felicia. Next week, Saturday, uh, there is a, I'm talking about cancer today. Saturday is the annual Women's Health Awareness and Sporting Day, but it is open to absolutely everyone. Dr. Ian Smith is one of the many presenters that will be there. Dr. Met, the Vet McQueen is flying in, emergency room physician talking about what needs to be in your house. Uh, and what you need on your vacation. Dr. Nicole Rochester is coming in. Dr. Uh, Brady, several OBGYNs. We have everybody, Lottie, Dottie, everybody, I'll be there. It's a wonderful time. Free health screenings. Bring your whole family. We have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gifts, giveaways, cooking demonstrations, all of that. Be there next week, May 5th. We'll be there 9 to 4. If you do want to be at Dr. Smith's, Ian Smith's workshop, he is first thing in the morning. He has limited books, but is taking pictures all day, and he, he is ready to engage you. Thank you so much. I'll be there. Uh, and I look forward to talking to you. Y'all, please spread the word. I'm going to work out. Bye-bye.